How's it going guys? I'm your host Jared Bronstein and today we decided to try something a little different. For those of you that don't know, the Face app has once again taken over the internet with everyone from Cardi B to Ludacris and Tyrese to Lil Nas X and even Drake jumping in on the action to see what they'll potentially look like as they grow old. It seems the entire world is getting behind this idea, myself included as you can see right here. People have been using it on their wedding photos, their grandparents and I'm sure some people have even tried to use it on their pets. So we thought it would be interesting to take a look at those who left us way too soon to get an idea of what they could have potentially looked like had they not passed. Now this video is comprised of rappers, hip hop and R&B artists that have passed away as far back as the 90s all the way until quite recently. Now just to clarify, we mean absolutely no disrespect to those no longer with us. We just thought it could be interesting to see what these artists would look like had they made it to an older age. We've done other videos in the past on those who are no longer with us. Most recently Cameron Boyce as many of you guys had requested with all the proceeds going to a charitable cause. Mike also made a video talking about his personal struggles with all of those proceeds being donated as well. Be sure to check both of those videos out after this one and let us know in the comments down below your thoughts on the video. I was in a situation where I would see somebody with certain things that I want and I would just make moves to get it myself. You know? Right. I wouldn't ever try to take somebody else's because it wouldn't really be mine if I took it from somebody else. Easily one of the biggest names to ever hop into the studio, Biggie Smalls, also known as Notorious, the Notorious B.I.G., Biggie, but to his mother, Christopher George Latour Wallace, was an American rapper born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. Many credit him to be the best rapper of all time, with hits such as Juicy, Hypnotize, Mo Money, Mo Problems, and Big Papa to name a few. Unfortunately, on March 9th at 12.45am, Biggie would be shot in the passenger seat of a car stopped at a red light. An unknown man pulled up next to Biggie's car and shot at the GMC Suburban Biggie was riding in, using a 9mm blue steel pistol, hitting Biggie four times. Although he would be rushed to hospital, he would be pronounced dead at 1.15am. At the time of his death, Biggie was in California promoting his upcoming album, Life After Death, and had plans to shoot the music video for the lead single, Hypnotize. Two weeks following his murder, Biggie's album would rise to number one on the US albums chart, and in 2000 his album would be certified diamond. Now the face app gives us the ability to see what Biggie would have potentially looked like if he hadn't passed at the young age of 24. It's safe to say his incredible career would have gone on for decades and I have no doubt he'd still be making classics to this very day. Even after his passing, there would be a handful of documentaries made about his life, rise to fame, and untimely death, including a biopic which was released in 2009. I knew that if I did good in the music, I could take care of my family a lot better. So I was more pushing towards making sure the music was tight, making sure every show I did was right, and just trying to get as much money as I could so I could take care of my family. Nathaniel Dwayne Hale, professionally known as Nate Dog, was born and raised in Clarksdale, Mississippi, but would move to Long Beach, California following his parents' divorce. The move would inevitably lead to Nate Dog befriending fellow rappers Snoop Dogg and Warren G, who would all go on to create a rap trio called 213. Their demo would be heard by Dr. Dre, who would then feature Nate on The Chronic, as well as sign him to Death Row Records. Many consider Nate Dogg to be one of the pioneers of West Coast hip hop, and his trademark style would lead to collaborations with the likes of Tupac, 50 Cent, Ludacris, and Eminem to name a few. On December 19th, 2007, Nate Dogg suffered a stroke, but would be released from hospital a week later. In 2008, Nate Dogg would suffer his second stroke, and unfortunately on March 15th, 2011, Nate Dogg would pass away at the age of 41 due to complications of multiple strokes according to his attorney. Although at the time of his death, it's believed Nate Dogg wasn't working on an album. In an interview from 2004, Nate did speak about an album he was going to be dropping produced by Dr. Dre. The app will allow us to see what Nate might have looked like if he hadn't passed so young. Since his passing, he's been featured on tracks such as Party We Will Throw Now and My House by good friend Warren G, as well as a few other tracks. Yeah, actually, Dre is doing my next album. So, Sweet. Yeah, he's doing the whole album. So yeah, I'm making sure we coming out swinging this year. All right. Another rapper from the West Coast that left us too early on in his career, Compton's own Easy e Real name Eric Lynn Wright, Easy e has been given the title Godfather of Gangster Rap. After forming one of hip hop's greatest groups, NWA, and garnering attention worldwide for pushing the boundaries of both lyrical and visual content for mainstream media, Easy es name will forever be a staple in the history of hip hop. After NWA would disband, Easy would go on to have a successful solo career, on top of being the founder of Ruthless Records, with his son estimating Easy's net worth being around $50 million at the time of his death. Easy e would publicly announce in a statement on March 16, 1995, that he was diagnosed with HIV AIDS, although he was really diagnosed two weeks prior at the hospital. On March 26, 1995, Easy would pass away 
weight due to complications of AIDS at the age of 30. Although many people, including one of his daughters, Ebby, and former partner and manager Jerry Keller, think he was actually murdered. In 2016, Ebby made a Kickstarter campaign to raise money to produce a documentary investigating into her dad's death. A ruthless scandal, no more lies would be the title. However, unfortunately, they were only able to raise just under $3,000 of the $250,000 needed to produce the film. As of now, it's unknown whether or not Ebby is continuing to try and produce the film, which originally tried to get funded back in October of 2016. Had Easy been able to live with the disease, I'm sure he would have continued to have an incredible career, and maybe we would even see NWA get back together. Even to this day, none of his kids, none of his baby mamas, his mistresses, anybody, nobody has came up with HIV or nothing like that. So I mean. Just, just rationally thinking, some, some had to go on. Aaliyah Dana Houghton was born on January 16th, 1979, in Brooklyn, New York, but she was best known by her stage name of just Aaliyah. From a young age, she would see success, releasing her debut album, Age Ain't Nothing But a Number, when she was just 14 years old. The album would debut at 24 on the Billboard 200 chart and sell 74,000 copies in its first week alone. This would lead to a lot of promise for the young star, who would go on to release another album, One in a Million, which would include producer credits to Timbaland and Missy Elliott. Aaliyah would also get her first Grammy nomination for the song Are You That Somebody, which would be produced by Timbaland as well. Aside from her musical talent, Aaliyah also starred in the films Romeo Must Die, opposite Jet Li, and the film Queen of the Damned. On August 25th, 2001, Aaliyah and eight others would all board a twin engine Cessna 402B with plans to return into Florida after filming the music video for the single Rock the Boat in the Bahamas. The plane would crash shortly after takeoff, with reports claiming they were only 200 feet away from the end of the runway. The crash would result in the plane exploding and everybody on board unfortunately unfortunately passing away. Aaliyah would continue to have a huge impact in the music industry, influencing the likes of J. Cole, Beyonce, Chris Brown, and The Weeknd to name a few. Following her untimely death, Aaliyah's vocals have been used on songs with Chris Brown, and Timbaland has confirmed that he has unreleased vocals recorded by Aaliyah. At the time of her death, Aaliyah was only 22 years old. It's undeniable that had she lived on, her career would have continued to flourish, and I have no doubt she would have had a long successful career in both film as well as music. Now you've been working it with these movies. Uh, Were you nervous? Very nervous, but I'm real happy. It's something I've wanted for a long time, so yes. to finally make that transition, it's, it's great. Malcolm James McCormick was born on January 19th, 1992, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but many knew him by his stage name, Mac Miller. Miller would start rapping at the young age of 14, but would really see success when he would drop his mixtape, Kids, which would lead to him being featured on the Double XL freshman class list of 2011. Miller would continue to see a ton of success, dropping a total of five studio albums and a total of 13 mixtapes over his 11 year career. However, throughout his career, Miller would also struggle with substance abuse and depression, telling Complex back in 2013, I quote, I love lean, it's great. I was not happy and I was on lean very heavy. I was so f***ed up all the time, it was bad. My friends couldn't even look at me the same. I was lost. Eventually Miller would seek help and it was believed he was completely sober, even stating in a documentary back in February of 2016 that he hated it. In an interview with W Magazine, Miller told them, I've spent a good time very sober and now I'm just like living regularly. I think it's important. I don't believe in absolutely anything, but I think not sharing that type of information because it becomes like, oh, he's sober, oh, he's not, oh, he has a beer, oh my god. I just realized some things are important to just keep for yourself. However, in August of 2018, Miller was charged with two counts of driving under the influence, and on September 7th, 2018, he would be found unresponsive in his home by his assistant. On November 5th, 2018, it was determined that Miller died from an accidental drug overdose due to a mixed drug toxicity of fentanyl, alcohol, and cocaine. Had he not passed away at 26, Miller most likely would have continued making a name for himself in the rap game, especially after his last studio album, Swimming, debuted at number three on the Billboard 200s. Following his passing, Miller's estate began approving posthumous music releases in June 2019 with the collaborative singles Time with Free Nationals and Caliuchas and That's Life with 88 Keys and Sia. There's, I just went through a long period where it was, uh, you know, you didn't, I didn't wake up very happy. In fact, if you could put your finger on it, you wouldn't have. <laughs> right, you would probably fix it. Nipsey Hussle was born Ermias Joseph Ashkadam on August 15th, 1985 in Los Angeles, California. He would release his first mixtape, Slauson Boy Volume 1, to a generally positive reception locally. This would lead to him being signed by Epic Records and Cinematic Music Group. Hustle would not only be known for his music, but also for his entrepreneurship and activism in his community. More specifically, Nipsey started a communal space named Vector 90, where he 
intended for young people to be able to take classes in science, technology, and math. Hustle also had a clothing brand which she was an investor and co-founder called Marathon Clothing. Hustle would also open a Marathon Clothing store in his old neighborhood because he wanted to invest and provide opportunities there. Unfortunately, on March 31st, 2019, around 3:25 p.m., Hustle was shot five times in a targeted attack. He would later be pronounced dead at hospital just 30 minutes later at the young age of 33. It's also important to mention Hustle had a meeting set up with the LAPD and Rock Nation scheduled for April 1st to discuss what they could do to help prevent gang violence in South Los Angeles. The meeting has been postponed but will happen and will take place in Nipsey's honor. Safe to say had he not been taken away before his time, Nipsey would have continued to do incredible things not only for the music industry but his community and all those around him. You said it earlier, like I, I educated myself. I, I, at one point I was ignorant and lost but like you gotta know yourself before you do anything, before you can make a record. Before you can have an opinion, you gotta know yourself. Tupac Amaru Shakur, born Lasan Parrish Crooks, was born on June 16, 1971, in Harlem, New York. Being a central figure in the West Coast hip hop scene, Tupac will forever go down as one of the greatest rappers of all time, alongside former friend turned rival Biggie Smalls. On the night of September 7, 1996, Tupac would be shot a total of four times in a drive by shooting while in Las Vegas. Shakur would be hit twice in the chest, once in the arm, and once in the thigh, but would be rushed to hospital where he'd be put on life support and an induced coma. On September 13, 1996, Tupac would die from internal bleeding, although the official causes of death were noted as respiratory failure and cardiopulmonary arrest in connection with multiple gunshot wounds. Although Tupac was only actively pursuing rap from 1990 until his passing in 1996, he would release four studio albums and appear in a total of 10 films, three which were released posthumously. On top of that, Tupac would have a ton of documentaries released about him, as well as a biopic which was released in 2017. It's no secret Tupac also had a lot of unreleased music following his death, which would lead to a total of six albums being released posthumously as as well. Tupac has also been named one of the best selling musicians of all time and was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2017. Safe to say, had this man made it past 25, he would have had an incredibly long and successful career as well. He was much more than you probably think. I'm not talking about Pac the rapper, I'm not talking about Tupac the actor, I'm talking about Tupac the human being. So with that said, we'd all like to officially welcome Tupac Shakur into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's all for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. As always, we want to hear from you guys, so feel free to drop a comment down below with who you'd like us to cover next. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein, and we'll see you in the next one.